Hello, this is Michael Yan in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Let's see if this new system works. Uh, this is the second time I've used it. I did a test today for about a minute, and now let's uh, let's see if it works. And if it does, it's streaming out to YouTube right now. Uh, it's streaming out to multiple. Uh, uh, it looks like it is. It looks like I just got an alert that it might be working. So it's going out to my Facebook page and sh should be going out to Periscope and uh, and a few other pages. And so let's see, the, the, the highest quality that I've seen, yeah, I, just, I did just get an alert that I am live on my YouTube page. Now, okay, now on my right side, so I'm live on YouTube, live on Facebook, because I, I can see that Nathan and, and, and Deep Al just, but Nathan and John and Chris, and Sherry and James and Mike and more are coming in on Facebook. Hello, everybody. And I'm looking at comments over here. That's what I'm looking at. And then I see D. Bo from Texas is on, but he's on YouTube. So I'm watching. So my incredible software package here and Doug just came on YouTube. So, uh, so most of the people I see coming on Facebook at this point, but I can also see comments coming on YouTube. So, all right. Isaac in court just said it looks good on YouTube. And Crichton Prowitz also on YouTube now. It looks better on YouTube. You can go over to my YouTube page. It's Michael Yon, uh, War Correspondent, cannib and Cannibal Hunter. There's two pages by the similar name. The one that's that's got a few thousand viewers is the is the correct one. I haven't used that page much, so there's not many viewers on it. But you know, we get stymied so much and have been since 2014 on Facebook. Facebook denies that I'm being shadow banned, but you know. The evidence is pretty clear. But I see a Gigi from New Jersey, for instance, is uh, said hello on my YouTube. And so Marta gave a thumbs up on YouTube. And Tony uh, Barrios is saying he's got me on both. Well, to I mean, I'm sorry, Tommy. Tommy, which one is best, YouTube or, or Facebook? To me, I think YouTube looks far better. Uh, but let's see what you what you say. Uh all right. So we'll we'll get started here soon. I see people uh, really come on. It's really excellent that I can see comments coming on on YouTube and Facebook, so I don't have to uh, miss any. Uh, I'm not seeing any come in on uh, Periscope, and it should be streaming on Periscope. Enough of that. Let's get down to business. All right. Um, down to business. So many things, interesting things to talk about. Uh, <clears throat> first, share this out, please. Quickly share it out. Uh, I my most I didn't do any. Uh, media appearances today other than talking with people offline my last media appearance was actually what uh tuesday morning here monday night in the united states with uh john bachelor and gordon chang and uh Th thaddeus mccotter i love that show the john bachelor show so excellent and i'm such an honor to be on there so regularly i'll be on again on thursday morning which is wednesday night or thursday <laughs> i'm sorry i'll post the time later uh, so anyway, here we go. Now the pan, let's talk about the Taliban, uh, peace agreement, quote unquote, you may have seen just a few days ago. I, I, you know, that those big peace agreements getting a lot of news and, and, uh, and I said, nonsense, you know, I, I didn't even look at the details of the peace agreement. You know, at some point I, I spent so much time in Afghanistan and rolling around with so many different sorts of Afghans, including Taliban. And at some point, I, I, so at some point, you just go, listen. I know it's not going to work. It's just not going to. Period. And already, th before the ink was dry, the Taliban have already started attacking. And it just—I mean, it, it, they literally just made the agreement when a few days ago, and they already started attacking again. Listen, you know, once you hunt enough alligators or whatevers, you don't. At some point, you don't need to see the the details anymore. You just know this is what alligators do. And like China lies, uh, Taliban fights, uh, you know what I mean? At some point, it's highly predictable just based on uh, previous experience, which is substantial and predates. Hey, G, uh, Santa Monica, G, Sun Ri, and Christina Lowry. A audio is a little funky, buffering. Oh, let me take this off. So, Christina Lowry saying the audio is a little funky, and she's saying that on youtube what do you mean by a little funky and uh but let's get let's keep going let me take i don't need those earphones on anymore i used to i've been wearing those a lot but where, when i'm going to need those is when i start taking call-ins because this new system i have will hook straight up to my phone and i can take call-ins now i'm not going to take any just yet 
because uh, I want to make sure the system works first. And, and then we'll start taking call-ins. Hopefully, my first guest will be Maura Moynihan. She's incredibly brilliant. She's a friend of mine. She's a Tibet expert. Her father was Senator Moynihan, and she actually grew up in India when she uh, when her father was the U.S. ambassador to India. What a life, man. So we always have a lot to talk about, uh, whether it's um, uh, India or Nepal or how to defeat the Communist Party of China. But anyway, uh, when it comes to the Taliban, it, it, it's just they're going to fight. It's fight, 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 talk, 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 fight, 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 just the way North Korea does, just the way the Chinese Communist Party does. And let's keep moving. Now, let's get to something uh, less predictable and like a thousand times, a million times more important, a billion times more important, uh, which is the virus. And not just the virus, but the various things that it happens. Remember, I've used the comparison before of, you know, the earthquake in Japan or that affected Japan that led to the tsunami, that led to the power outage, that led to the heat buildup which led at the nuclear plant, which led to the explosion, which led to radiation, which led to radiation leaks, which led to a lot of huge problems that still continue today and will continue for generations. So, I mean, these, uh, these problems often cascade. And the initial problem with the virus, for instance, will we'll easily survive the virus. I mean, there could be huge people die. I mean, who knows? It could be 100 million people die. We, we don't know yet. Or it could be just a million. Uh, we don't know. Uh, it'll probably be a significant number of people, though. And so let's see. Um, Jason said, can understand me clear my, my audio? Let's see what people are saying about my audio. Uh, your audio is slightly sputtering on occasion on YouTube. What about... And wait a minute. So also I see people saying, oh, I see. Maybe let me up my... Let me up my volume here. How's this? That should be a little better. Is that how's that? Is it better? Let's see. One, two, three. Test one, two, three. We'll get this bugs worked out of this thing, and then we'll have it. Uh, then we'll know what we're doing. Uh, let's see. Because if if Jason is, and others are struggling to hear, then that's not acceptable. We because I have this really incredible system here. This should be as this sh this sound should be as good as and Doug is saying choppy sound. I touched my face. It was a Facebook as well. Choppy sound doesn't change the audio. Still warbling. Hmm. Uh, I'm not seeing what the problem would be unless I have a bad connection. And my only uh, idea on how to fix that would be to turn it off and turn it back on and so and also joe saying it's clipping i'm looking at the connections here huh well let me see here how about we switch microphones and see if this does something and um how's that uh oh i think i did not switch microphones uh let's see i'm sorry about this might turn the gain down almost like a bad internet connection. Christina saying the video is great. I can hear echoes, echoes. How are you hearing echoes? How are you hearing echoes? Hmm. Well, you know, I hate to bother people. Maybe I should turn this off and come back on. I can hear and see perfectly. Ciao, Patricia. Wait a minute, how's it going to, you're good closer to the microphone, somebody says. John Miley, sound a little choppy, but doable. Maybe I just need to be closer to the microphone. Barely noticeable, warbling came back. Maybe I just need to be closer. And then Graham says, totally lost you. You just got, could be because the uh, gain is not quite good enough. Let's try a little bit more gain. How's that? Let's see, one, two, three. Uh, so many important things to talk about, and we're having these tech issues. Cindy is saying, fine on my, my end. It's going to be okay. Keep going. Uh, worse, closer. Worse, closer. It, so some pe echoes only happened when your conversation was more excited. Huh. Let me try a few different buttons here. How's that? Let's see if that's made any difference. And uh, 
Let's see here. Maybe this is uh, still readable. What a problem is not Urian, Jim says. Which in? Fine for me too. Grace is saying, what is your audio output bit rate? Uh, good question. How do I even check that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what my audio bit rate output is. And I hate to, to, to do this while we're, while we're trying to go live. Audio can still be a buffering issue without your phone's better sounds. Cynthia is saying we are fine. Just mix no difference. You ought to make me want to clear my throat. <laughs> so take your time. We don't want to hear uh, so many important things to talk about. And, uh, what could possibly be wrong here? Hmm. It's fine for me, Suzanne, saying, and it may be too high for your outgoing connection, maybe bandwidth. Well, we can continue if you want and uh, move away from the speaker. All right, let's see. Just talk, please, and can hear you and fix later. All right. Ah, that's terrible. I'll have to watch it myself and see later. Well, I I'm very sorry about the audio. I don't know what to do other than either to turn it off or continue. Let's continue. First world problems, right? Court says, let's go. Let's continue. Oh, you know what might be a problem? This might be better. How's this? This could be better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That might be a lot better, actually. All right. So here we go. Let's go. That, all right, here we go. All right, so anyway, on the virus, this virus is obviously far more important than the Taliban. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, far, yeah, okay, good. I think we fixed it. So the, the audio uh, uh, is, seems to be fixed, hopefully. So right now, the, the virus is by far the most important thing going on in the world. You see the markets crashing. You see all kinds of economic problems in the United States government trying to... Uh, that stem uh, any sort of panic moves, uh, and also to uh, to increase and to they've changed uh, uh, lending rates and and all all sorts of things. They're hitting all the levers and buttons in the cockpit to try to keep the economy going strong. Obviously, as I've said since January, there's remember I lifted and shifted in January. I still am working on the Hong Kong insurgency, but that was the biggest in important thing going on in the world at the time. But this virus, because remember, the biggest thing, the most important thing in the world right now is China, is the Chinese Communist Party. That is our problem. And so uh, then this virus came. Uh, and so that actually supplanted the Hong Kong insurgency on important because they're all part of the same, all part of the same arena, right? They're all part of the same context and problem set. And so, um, and now, and even though I've been communicating with uh, Hong Kong fighters all day and into the night tonight after I just got a little hour and a half of sleep, uh, they uh, that fight continues to go on. I mean, some were on the streets tonight. Uh, 115 were arrested on Saturday night. Uh, but this virus, as you can see, is, is it, it's more than just the virus. It's also the effects that it will have on the economy, political effects probable wars here and there that'll break out from it and, and events like this. I mean, this is this is the event of our lifetime, the way it's unfolding at this time. That could change. I'm going to take a guess right now. I hate to go out on a limb because you, you have to live with these things. Uh, but I have a sense that this bad boy is going to be so out of control that within a month, there'll be a million cases outside of China. Uh, so, uh, that I, I just said it, I, I, I actually think there'll be probably a million cases outside of China within about a month from now. So, uh, we'll, let's see. And that might be conservative actually. We'll see. Uh, now I continue to see even serious, very serious people that keep talking about Chinese numbers and they just, they just, th this is the, how incredibly effective information war can be. China just puts out these numbers that we all realize are fake. Everybody that's been paying attention to China, by the way, knows that they're, they'll be falsified. And yet they still keep using the numbers, even if it's New York Times or Washington Post or, or whomever. And they'll still keep going, 
here's the numbers. We know they're wrong, but here they are. Well, th that's what sticks in our heads is those numbers. I just touched my face. Uh, so that's what sticks in our head is those numbers, right? And for instance, now you look at the China curve on the on the Johns Hopkins site, but Johns Hopkins is getting their information. I was just checking it tonight. They're getting their information from China. So people look at that curve and they say, oh, it's flattening out in China. Oh, Chinese uh, uh, measures are really putting an end to this. Well, again, it's Chinese numbers. We don't know. And uh, and so there's no there's no uh, there's no way to know. I'm looking at comments here to see if. Um, looking at comments here to make sure the audio is good. All right. So I'm not seeing anybody complain about audio. That's great news. And so, yeah, uh, now we can see that this is bit by bit hitting different economies. For instance, Italy right now is getting badly damaged. Um, and, uh, and also the Iranian economy, which was already in dire straits, it was sickened by their continuous war against Israel and the United States and just anybody that they don't like. And I mean, because, you know, uh, Iran is massive on exporting terrorism. And so that has resulted in huge amounts of, of, uh, of um, uh, economic pain for them caused largely by us and, and, uh, and others that we pressure to, to, to cause that pain. And so now Iran already sickened by their fight in, in, in their own containment, more or less, uh, now are stuck with this virus and parts of their government have become ill uh, and a high, high level government people have become ill. They've just released, according to reports, uh, what was it, 54 or 56,000 prisoners. Uh, so, you know, just release them apparently from Iranian prisons because of the spread of the virus in the prisons. Imagine how this same dynamic could play out in the United States. Uh, and it could, you know, the, a release from prisons could happen not just from, uh, you know, from humanitarian reasons, which I'm not sure how humanitarian that would actually be. But, you know, if, what if guards just stop going to work? I mean, because of the, the environment, uh, you know, again, for instance, with airline shutdowns, people ask, when will government shut down more uh, air travel? A huge amount's already been shut down. It's very difficult. People are asking me all the time, can I fly from, you know, Indonesia to Bangkok or whatever? I'm like, hey, I'm not a travel agent. You, you got to check that yourself. There's a huge amount of variables going on. I mean, and things change by the hour. And so, you know, the flights between Bangkok and Germany or Oslo and Tokyo, I don't know. And they're changing constantly. And so, and the, remember, these changes can occur not just because a government uh, uh, makes a change. It could be the Japanese government. It could be the Norwegian government. It could be somebody else. Uh, but also because, you know, pilots or, or air crew or whoever, whomever could go on strike or ground crew. It could be the baggage handlers. Anybody could just say, I'm just not going to go to work. Or travelers just reduce their rate of travel so much that they just cancel the flights for economic reasons. So, I mean, there's all kinds of different ways that these things uh, can happen. Flights uh, decrease because of, uh, and this, this is already affecting everybody. The global economy is already sharply affected by this. And we're, we're going to see a lot more of that as time unfolds. Let me um, look at some more notes here. So yeah, the Italian economy is in, is having serious problems. And this is obviously spreading throughout Europe, as these fires do. And uh, South Korea, interesting. Uh, South Korea also has massive problems. Uh, they are doing testing often in cars so that people don't have to get out of their cars to go into the hospital and, and contaminate the hospital, uh, which could lead to a quarantine of the hospital. Hello, Antonelle in Nevada. Let's see. In, uh, how's the audio? And uh, Gordon Bradbury is saying, who is the World Health Organization is changing its tune now, came out and mentioned 3.5 fatality rate. We'll see. I don't trust anything from the World Health Organization. Uh, the, I don't trust the World Health Organization any more than China because they've obviously become a puppet of China. I don't know when they became a puppet of China, but they clearly are, for instance, in calling this COVID-19. And even when we've got, what, 70, 80, how many countries now are on board with saying we've got cases, they're still... Still, as of hours ago, World Health Organization is still not calling this a pandemic when it is transparently a, an, a, a, a pandemic. And so uh, and, and, and this is clearly at, at the uh, at the urging of, of the Chinese Communist Party. All right. So. Now, with the World Health and the CDC, the CDC itself has become part of the viral problem. The CDC has lost all credibility. One of the first 
One of the last things that you want to do is lose credibility in a situation like this. But we can't just pretend that they have credibility when the uh, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have uh, overtly lied to us and misled us and missed the boat repeatedly. And not just under President Trump. They've done it serially through decades. So this is not a Trump thing, although he's made some pretty wild statements on this virus. Uh, you know, as much as I've supported Trump on immigration, on uh on uh, clamping down on China, I just wish he would do it a lot harder, uh, not just the uh, travel, but uh, trade wise and, and, and many other things. I really enjoyed what President Trump has done on many things, but not on this virus. On this virus, he's getting a failing grade from me so far. And, um, you know, uh, so, yeah, the Korea, I saw a, a friend of mine in Korea, a retired U.S. Uh, Army fellow. Uh, uh, Robert Neff, he's a, a gifted uh, author, by the way. We went to the same military language school, by the way. Uh, but he uh, sent a, he published a photo today, or sent a photo, and there was a there's some kind of festival in Korea, and it, there's a sign in English and Korean. It said "No foreigners." I don't read Korean, but it said it in English, and it said "No foreigners," and uh, because they uh, because they're afraid of the spread of this virus. It's funny though, you know, you can post these things around other countries. Like no foreigners, but you know, in Korea, that's not racist in Korea, is it? All right. So let's keep going. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you for everybody that's hit my Patreon, by the way, and PayPal. I very much appreciate it. That is absolutely vital. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, shooting the messenger. Uh, obviously, I don't like delivering bad news. I know how the dynamic goes. The dynamic is whoever brings bad news gets shot. That's the way it's been for thousands of years, and apparently, if you look at old writings. Uh, but shooting the messenger is an old sport. Uh, you know, we, 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 it's hard to dissociate ourselves. That's why presidents and whatnot will often have their vice president or somebody else deliver bad news. And then the president, and I'm not saying Trump, but any president will typically, they'll come out and deliver good news because we psychologically will associate uh, good news with bad news. That's why I published back in 2006 that if you want to make money, you tell people what they want to hear. For, I wrote that in regard to Afghan war, which I knew we were losing. And then uh, my next sentence went on to something like, but if you want to win the war, tell the truth. Well, I'm doing that now. But then a lot of my enemies at that point, a lot of mill bloggers and people that were in, in you know, uh, basically comprom politically cro compromised, they, they cut off my second sentence uh, be, uh, and, and stuck with, well, you know, he said up openly, if you want to make money, you tell, you tell what people want to hear. Well, that's, tr that's the truth. Uh, but I was then telling, saying that we were losing the war in Afghanistan. And that was 2006 for people that know much about the war, about Afghanistan. I mean, I was saying that on like Fox news. I was saying that to CNN. I was saying that all over American media. I was writing it in major articles. And so, uh, yeah, I was saying it very clearly. And a lot of people said I'd lost my mind, just like with this virus, the things I was saying in January. And so now it's becoming uh, self-evident. But there's still a lot of people, even as of hours ago, that still don't even highly educated people that think this is all about panic. And this, I, I think, you know, they're at very best uh, part of the problem. Now we saw, I saw a, uh, a headline from uh, Washington Post. I saw it about an hour ago. It said, Iran's reaction to the coronavirus has become a danger to the world. That was Washington Post. I'll say it again. Iran's reaction to the coronavirus has become a danger to the world. That's interesting. That's an interesting point because, uh, first of all, I don't call it the coronavirus. Let's just call it what it is. It's the China plague, the Wuhan virus, right? Uh, and so this, uh, this, we're, 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 they're picking on Iran when Washington Post clearly and openly at times has sided with China at times. I'm not saying that they always do it. But they clearly are compromised by China. Clearly, the problem is China. That doesn't mean that people, that countries like Iran could have done, we could have done more United States, uh, other countries, Thailand could have done more, Japan could have done more. We all could have done more by isolating China immediately, stop all flights from China. But nobody did it. By the time President Trump stopped limited flights from China, just from Hubei, you know, that sort of thing. First of all, there was already Chinese all over the world. And secondly, it was like closing one window in, in a hotel for a 40-story hotel, you know, with all the other windows open. We can slow it down, which is has a lot of value, but we weren't stopping it. So, uh, and so, yeah. Uh, um, 
but we will have a tendency, not just with this particular virus, but in the future and in the past, <clears throat> we'll focus on some often religious group. For instance, Koreans focusing on that cult in Korea that seem to have uh, super spread issues. But is that cult in Italy? Is that cult in Iran? Is that cult in China? Is that, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, this, this happens over and over, whether it's Nazis blaming Jews or whether it's, there's always this uh, blame and we'll focus or we we'll focus here on Iran when really it's a lot of people, everybody who's not taking this seriously is it's like a million arsonists. Now you ever read that book by uh, v, what's his name? V.S. Naipaul. Yeah. The Indian guy is a really wild book. Uh, I, I read it many years ago when I was cannibal hunting, but anyway, uh, it was a million mutinies now. Right. But this is like a million uh, arsons now or millions and millions where people that aren't taking it seriously and aren't wearing uh, protective garb. And they'll say, well, only old people are dying as if they don't care about their grandparents uh, uh, or, or it, it, it's not how this is going to work out. Trust me. We've already seen the, the markets uh, crashing and, uh, and, and this is going to continue in one way or another because this thing is just getting started. Um, the Chinese economy, uh, as we know it, has collapsed. And the China that we knew in December, I'm looking at something on the screen back here, the China that we knew in, in December uh, is dead. Now, the Chinese Communist Party is still alive, but the Chinese Communist Party that we knew has uh, been emasculated economically and uh, politically. They don't have the, the uh, they don't have the oomph that they had just even very recently. I'm the only one saying that. I haven't, I haven't seen anybody saying that the CCP as we know it is dead. I haven't seen a single person say that. And I'm paying very close attention. But it's clear that the China that we know is dead. The Chinese Communist Party, let's say more clearly, is dead. It may survive. Now, cults have an interesting dynamic. I've studied cults quite a lot when I was tracking cannibals and studying cults because of my old Green Beret old timers would always say, study religions, study cults, study all these things because you're going to come across these things and all your things that you do in life and you need to study them up now. And, and so I've studied, I've spent years studying those things. Uh, interesting dynamic with cults is that when they get into a rough situation, like let's say predicting that the uh, asteroid's going to wipe out the earth and we're going to all go off in that. Remember those guys with the asteroid cult? Where are they in California? I don't recall. Uh, but interestingly, you might think that a cult would, once they are proven wrong, would then just dissolve and disappear. That's often not the case at all. And uh, they often get stronger. They don't actually dissolve, they pack on more members. Uh, they redouble. They don't quit. They, they, and so look at, look at the cult of Mao. Uh, the Chinese Communist Party came out of that. Look at all these various communist cults. Mao, uh, you know, because communism is definitely a cult-like uh, government structure. Uh, it, it's, a, it's sort of a religion. If you've studied communism enough, uh, which I did, I started heavy study of communism while I was a Green Beret. And, and you realize that, uh, especially when you stack this on the study of, of cults, then you see the overlay is quite, quite clear. I mean, uh, whether it's Leninism or, 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 or uh, Maoism or the various isms uh, of, of communism. So whether or not the Chinese Communist Party itself will just, you know, blow up and be gone, communism certainly will not be gone. Uh, we have the, uh, you know, Bernie guy running around, running for president right now. He may keel over at any minute, though. I mean, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, but so, I mean, communism, I, I wrote that in my first book, Danger Close, which came out in 1999. And, I, and this was long, you know, when a lot of people thought communism was dead. I put I remember I put one sentence in there. I put that one sentence in there in 1999 as a time capsule. Something like, what did I say? People, maybe who's got that book? My book, Danger Close, is really, you should read it. If you read the first page, I'll bet you'll read the rest of the book. Read the first page of my book, Danger Close, I'll bet you'll read the rest of the book. But I put one sentence in there, something about communism. We haven't seen the end of it or something like that. That was just a time capsule. I'm like, because I'd studied it enough. I'd studied cults enough. I'd studied all this enough. I'm like, it looks like communism's beaten at that point in 1999, but it's not. It's not. And now we can see it. It's coming back with a vengeance, despite all the failures, constant failures, all of, whether it's socialism, communism, uh, the various isms that are similar, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in the, at the end of the day, similar uh, failure after failure after failure. They never go away.
cults don't just go away. They'll they'll claim persecution. Uh, sound familiar? They'll claim, uh, for instance, this cult in Korea is now claiming to be persecuted, which they may be persecuted. I'm not saying it's they're, that they're not. They actually might be. But for instance, communists in the, where in the 1920s, they were using, when, when they were being beaten, uh, they used the fact that they were being beaten to help build their their cult. John Batchelor, my last uh, um, uh, interview with him and Gordon Chang and uh, Thaddeus McCotter said that just two days ago, right? Uh, you know, John Batchelor is brilliant. He, he talked about it. where have the Hong Kong police not learned the lesson? You know, they're communist lackeys for Beijing uh, and, and they're beating all these uh, uh, freedom fighters in Hong Kong in the streets and in front of our cameras and that sort of thing. Uh, and and this only makes the freedom fighter stronger. That's how communists, that's one of the ways that communists got so much stronger was people would beat down the communists and that helped them uh, become stronger paradoxically. So that's very interesting. So you get that, that catch 22 going uh, where counterinsurgent actions, if you do wrongly is bad medicine and exacerbates the disease. But you'll see often in cases like this uh, that uh, I'm going to start taking questions uh later but i want to go through a few things first and then we'll um and then we will gosh so many uh because they're coming in on youtube as well and they're coming in on facebook and so uh right and also this is uh, should be live streaming out to uh brian colfage's pages as well i hope it is brian colfage is doing incredibly important work down on the u.s mexican border on helping to build walls down there. That's incredibly important. I got some of his coffee here, actually. I'll talk about that on another broadcast. But uh, so um, uh, now, where what to do next in the United States? Well, first of all, as I said about what, less than 24 hours ago or so, we really should close the borders. I mean, we already are, the United States is going to get hit hard, but we can still slow it down and try to keep our hospitals from being overrun. Uh, because once the medical facilities are overrun, we get down to triage uh, and, and, and a lot of people just aren't going to get it treated. And the case fatality rate goes up because it's already known that this particular disease uh, is the, the case fatality rate is highly contingent upon how much good medical treatment that you get. Right. And so once you reach a certain point in epidemics, pandemics, they're the same thing, but bigger. Right. Well, not exactly the same, because, uh, you know, in the pandemics, you get all these different dimensions that are international political. But anyway, not to go into that. Uh, but, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, 9-11 or combat or something like that, you got too many casualties for the for the medical personnel or the medical uh, facilities to handle. And then so your fatalities go up simply because they can't get care. Triage. Right. So we're about down to triage. And so what are we going to do when it comes to our own prisons, when this inevitably gets inside of our own prisons? What are we going to do? Keep them in prisons like uh, keep them in prisons like we like on the uh, cruise ships. I saw an advertising. Oh, Barbara Boyer says she's watching it through Brian's parade. Good. I love Brian Kofage and all his supporters are doing really vital work. And when I finally come back to America, I want to go down and see the efforts that they're putting into building the walls. It's very vital. It's incredibly important. Uh, but let's talk about uh, the United States. I mean, our we, we are containment is out of the question at this point. And now we're down to uh, now we're down to uh, to mitigation, to damage control. And so that's where we're at now. Now, I've been saying for a long time, people who've read my work for many years know that when I say something this confidently, and this directly and in this tone of voice that it has, I have, I'm batting 400, which in non-baseball people's terms is 100%. Anytime I change to this tone, very direct, very confident, very, I have always, always been right. You won't find a time when I've been wrong. And that's been some big things. The Iraq Civil War, I was saying it a year and a half ahead of other people. And I was saying it repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. And then finally, it became, uh, the, the, interestingly, whether it's the Afghan war or the Iraq civil war or the Japan-Korea relations, which I also successfully uh, predicted, admit, what, and I was saying very confidently as well on those. And, and what, when I say these things like this on the disease, 
I'm not predicting, actually. This is kind of the trick. It's not, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not that smart at all, but I do homework very hard. I study like crazy. So I study seven days a week. And, 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 uh, and so often when I'm saying, for instance, there's a civil war in Iraq, well, I was, and I was running all over Iraq. And so I was already seeing it. Others didn't see it or they were in denial for various reasons. One was just political or maybe they just couldn't see it, but I was out there all over the place. I was watching them decapitate each other and that sort of thing. They were really going, most of the casualties at that time were Iraqis killing Iraqis, that sort of thing. So when I was saying these things, they were already there. So it's sort of like me predicting that a house is going to burn down. I just walk out of a house and I'm like, hey, that house is going to burn down over there. And people are like, no, the fire alarm's not even going off. And I'm like, well, there's a candle over there. The kid just set, set the curtains on fire. The fire alarm will go off soon. <laughs> you know, call the fire department, you know, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and people are like, no, 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 whatever. It's not. And I'm like, well, there's, you know, and before you know it, the house burned down and the neighborhood's on fire. Right. And so, so I, I wasn't predicting the Iraq civil war. I was telling what was already happening. Same with the Afghan war. I wasn't predicting what the Taliban was going to do. I was looking at their history and looking at what was going on. Just like when I walked into the uh, insurgency in Hong Kong and I understand insurgency at a PhD level. That's the one thing I can talk about with all these guys with the PhDs and, and counterinsurgency and all that stuff. Well, I can talk with them straight up peer level, no problem. And oftentimes with more experience than a lot of them. Some of them have, will have more experience, but not very many. And some do, but not a lot. And, uh, and so that's why I was able to walk into, uh, for instance, Afghanistan. And, and one of the things that you do when you, first thing I do is walk in, well, I, I wouldn't talk about insurgency another time and why I was so quickly able to uh, ascertain that uh, Hong Kong, for instance, was an insurgency or that the war was going badly in Afghanistan. There's certain things like as a doctor walks in and he smells the room and checks blood pressure and checks temperature and asks for a few symptoms and, and, and you know, maybe just a few things. And from experience goes, well, you know, uh, take two aspirin. You're okay. You know, <laughs> or, or, or goes, oh, this, you know, we need to get some more tests. This looks like it could be, you know, thyroid cancer or something. Right. And so, but if you, if you've studied insurgency enough and that sort of thing, you can do the same thing. You can walk right in and very quickly look at certain symptoms. One of those would be human, for instance, human intelligence. Is it going up or is it going down? That's one of the first things I look for when I walk in is like, how's the human intelligence going? How do people look at the police? How do they look at the army? Uh, and the human, the human is like blood pressure. That's the first thing I go for. I start asking, you know, how's, how's your human? I start asking intelligence people. I start asking locals, hey, will you talk to the police? Do you trust the police? If the answers are repeatedly no, 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 no. Do you trust the army if the answer is no, 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 no? Or if the army is, oh, yeah, we like the army. What do you think about the Taliban? Oh, we don't like them. But, you know, if you but if you get the opposite, you'll, well, this is like your blood pressure. And, and so, likewise, these same sorts of uh, thinking processes do uh, – are, are transferable when you're looking at other things, uh, like figuring out who among all these medical experts and the virologist and the epidemiologist and the, uh, uh, and others, how, who, who among here know what they're talking about and are not politically compromised. And clearly CDC is got a lot of brilliant people working for them and they don't know what they're doing. Stock up on food. All that is to say, stock up on food is very important. Uh, if there are no shortages, just consider that a bonus, just get long lasting food. I've stocked up and, you know, I always have a lot of stock, uh, but stock up and, and get as much, uh, as you can afford to get, you know, I, absolute bare minimum, get one month supply. Don't all this two week supply. They're afraid to say one month because that sounds so scary. I'm telling you, get one month. It's very important because remember the virus issues are not the, we're still going to have hurricane season. Still going to have a fire season, still going to have an earthquake somewhere. You know, all these things, life still goes on. The economy's going down uh, right now. And so uh, a lot of things are changing. You're, uh, a lot of things that you can readily get right now, like medicines, probably will not be available soon. Uh, a, a huge percentage, 80, 85% or so, uh, according to the book uh, uh, China Rx. Uh, is uh, sourced from China or, or, or we depend upon China. And that's not just the United States. That's European countries. That's here in Thailand. That's over in uh, India and other countries all dependent because we, our 
governments have made such incredible errors and created conditions that that were favorable for huge amounts of our businesses to move over to China and uh, and you know and uh, and also uh, retirement uh, pensions invested in China, which may never be seen again. Uh, there's going to be some life-changing events come out of this. Uh, now, make sure you stock up on water. I was checking one of my old water things. I've talked about my water filter many times, the Catadine water filter. Uh, and uh, but I, I, there's another. Um, and and I'm not. I don't make any money on Catadine, but that's not that's not the point. The point is, is you need a water filter, right? You always need it anyway. And, and but I have other ways to sterilize water. That's not just the only. Actually, water. Water sterilization and water filtering are not the same, uh, and water purification is not the same. So I mean, uh, so this this is the one I I've had that one since at least two thousand and two. I've taken that bad boy all over the world: Iraq, Afghanistan, India, Nepal, Tibet, all over China, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines. Man, just everywhere, all across camping in America, all over the place. Great filter, but it doesn't. Those won't filter out viruses. In North America, generally, you're not going to find viruses in, in, in water in the wild. But if you have an event uh, such as Katrina and, you know, a city gets wiped out and you got all the sewage in the water, you may have viruses. So I have this thing. I took it out to test it. It's called a steeropin and it's made also by Catadine. Uh, but it, this one doesn't even work. I took it out to check it today. And basically what you do, it's, it has two uh, batteries in here, the CR123 batteries or 124, what are they called? Uh, and you, and you, you hit this button and, uh, and then uh, there's two sensors here and you stick it in the water and you stir the water and it, the UV kills the pathogens, including viruses, right? Uh, not that viruses are alive apparently, but you stir it up. But this one's not working. So I sent a message to Catadine some hours ago. It was working before, but there's two, there's a sensor here and a sensor here. Uh, but so this will actually kill viruses and bacteria and all that good stuff, but it's not working. And off, and one of the things about this sort is you don't normally use it. I just have it as backup and now it's not working, right? Well, there's the red light and uh, I just saw it blink. Uh, but, um, but uh, yeah, you can see it blinking, but the, um, but the the point is is uh, see it's got three reds and a green. That's a so if you that's a, a problem. A lot of people don't remember what those codes mean. I don't remember what they mean. So I looked it up on their on their uh, website, and that's a, one of the things many people were complaining about is by the time they use these things because they'll buy it and only use it a couple times, and then they keep it and they need it next year and they forget forget what all the flashing codes mean. But the bottom line is is UV is a great sanitizer, uh, but things like this you can't rely on them. And so, uh, and so they use these little, little batteries that you've seen so many times. And, but there's an other, there's other ways to, to sterilize your water with, with UV, with sunlight. You take bottles like this as an example and, uh, and you, well, you cut the, uh, cut the plastic off with your Swiss army knife because everybody's got a Swiss army knife, right? Or just tear it off. So you take all the label off, right? And make the water needs to be kind of clear to begin with, right? And then you want to make sure it's clear enough that if you look through it, you can like read, you know, like newspaper below it, if you can see through it. So, I mean, so it's clear enough that you can actually see through it. And then what you do is you just set it in the sun, you lay it in the sun and the UV will, will missionaries teach people this all over, all over, like in Africa. So you lay it in the sun, like on your roof, right. And, and, uh, and lay it in a way that it's getting, you know, the, you know, really the whole body getting sunlight on it. Don't stand it up like this, but lay it down. And, and lay it in, you know, in a way that it's getting full and leave it all day in the sun. If it's cloudy, uh, you, um, it'll still work, uh, but still, you know, partly you, anyway, look up online. You can see more information about that. Uh, but you know, you should leave it out all day and you might need to leave it two days. It depends on, on the, uh, on the, on the, on the, you know, if you're up in Norway, it's not going to work as well, but if you're down near the equator, you know, I mean, seriously, you got the sun, you know, when you're at the equator and the sun, it's noontime, there's no shadow, right? <laughs> there's like no shadow. And so, you know, uh, uh, but you know, you can put up, you know, a hundred of these water bottles and always have them day after day in the sun and, uh, and, and the UV will, it doesn't, it doesn't filter it obviously because, but it, but it, um, but it's the UV will kill the, the viruses and that sort of thing and the bacteria. So anyway, let me see if there's any, uh, questions. A lot of people will use things like Clorox. I'm not going to go into that. There's a thousand ways to, to filter or to, uh, 
to to uh, uh, purify water in different ways or to uh, san uh, to uh, to san to 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 sanitize it, for instance, killing the viruses. There's so many ways. Uh, but let's see about any questions here. And and again, thank you for uh, hitting my page. Well, so many questions. Uh, let's see. Can you put close to the screen so I can see the brand? I can't understand what you're saying on the name. Are you talking about the the um, the the ster the Steripin? It's this. Let's see if that shows. You can. It, it, I mean, it's not. Wait a minute. That's too close, isn't it? I mean, get it to autofocus on that Steripin. There's different kinds. This is an older one. You can see it's called the Adventurer. I think the new kind is Adventurer um, Opti or something like that. They only get about four star reviews. Um, Spider Man uses it, uh, and so. Uh, but they, um, I, 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 again, I don't use it very much. This is one that I would use sometimes, and uh, uh, for various reasons, and, and it's good to have around. Uh, but it's not one that I use constantly. What I use consistently, though, is my my Catadyne water filter. This the uh, Catadyne is the one that I. This is the one. I, oh gosh, I've pumped like a thousand gallons through this bad boy. Catadyne pocket filter. This thing is uh, really a great filter. You can just go to the Catadyne or go to Amazon or whatever. I don't make any money on doing that. I'm just telling you that's good stuff. All right. Uh, Creighton says Nashville hit by a tornado last night. Uh oh. Uh, got good friends up there. Hmm. Hope everybody is good. All right. No testing. No testing and not reported. Uh, what's going to happen with the prisons? I don't know, Barbara. Good question, though. <laughs> yeah. Like the theater mode in YouTube, Tommy says. Tommy Barrio. So you can hit the YouTube. Uh, you can hit the theater button, and the camera looks in the the. It looks better, huh? Uh, okay, now uh, Chris Madden is saying, any theories why nobody in Africa has contracted the virus? At least not yet. Warm climate? Okay, hold on. Uh, first of all, Africa's got a lot of climates. And uh, and, and next, uh, we don't know that. Uh, Africa, there's not enough testing, even in the United States. Um, we don't know. And we'll, we'll never know exactly what happens in Africa. Uh, because Africa, you know, is Africa. And so it's... it's uh, um, you know, a lot of things are just going to happen out there and we're never going to hear about it. And so, no, I, I don't know the answer to that. But other, other than I would say the chances of it not being in Africa and widespread are pretty doggone remote. OK. All right. Shalise, can you put close to the screen so I can see the brand? I hope you got it. I hope you got that. Uh, why are they not talking about Jamaica and small islands? Well, you know, uh, Barbara Asami says, asks. Uh, well, that's a good question, but remember the 1918 pandemic just ravaged the islands around the world. Uh, so it's not like it's, they're, they're not going to be saved. I mean, there's already like, I think some cases in Hawaii and the, the islands, this is nothing. Remember, this is 2020. We got air traffic, like bus stops. There's look on flight radar 24. Now you'll see probably thousands of flights in the air right now at this moment. And and so, you know, today, probably millions of people, certainly millions of people will cross borders all over the world, either by land, sea or air. Right. They might be walking between, you know, Nicaragua and Costa Rica or whatever uh, and or flying or whatever. This it's it's, it's just going to spread everywhere. The virus viruses don't know any borders. They don't care about borders. And, and there's no way to keep them from crossing borders. That's why a lot of people say, well, it's just Africa. Who cares about the Ebola? You know, <laughs> actually, Ebola was a big scare. A lot of people know. And then people go, well, nothing happened from Ebola. It, uh, well, how many people died? It was like 11,000 or something. I don't recall, but um, it was estimated. Uh, but remember, there was a huge containment effort. So that, that the idea is to contain it quickly to keep it there and, and don't let it spread. And, and so that it doesn't get out. When it happens in a place like that, you can go in and try to contain it. But the Wuhan virus, the China plague, which w World Health Organization has tried to rename to COVID-19 or whatever, uh, that uh, started, or at least we noticed it, the world noticed it, uh, in, in Wuhan, in Hubei province in China. And Wuhan is very densely populated area. So it started, it reached critical mass in a highly uh, pop, uh, high population density area. So it already started in a hugely bad place to start. Like if there's any worse place in the world to start than that, 
you'd have to put your thinking cap on. You know what I mean? Maybe Hong Kong would have been a worse place to start. Uh, but there's actually, it would not have been. The worst place was almost certainly China because, first of all, population density and the relative wealth, and they're flying all over the world, and uh, and the Chinese Communist Party hiding it. So this this you know all these various things uh, taken at once, this constellation of issues uh, create you know the perfect storm. And let's see, uh, Leonard saying Ebola is far far less contagious. Yeah, I mean obviously all these things. Um, all these different diseases. I'm not an infectious disease expert. It's, I've just read about them for years and study up on, you know, uh, because it is a national defense. And also I spend a huge amount of time and, and really, uh, uh, you know, tracking around all kinds of places. And so it's very, it's in my uh, uh, best interest to understand a little, a few things. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's like, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, trying to figure out what, whether, you know, how deadly something is based on one factor doesn't work. Like how deadly is a snake? Well, you know, if you look online and try to find the 10 most deadly snakes, you can literally find 10 different lists that say 10 different things and they can all be accurate. They can say, well, the 10 most venomous snakes. Well, what's most venomous mean? Like rattlesnakes can put out a huge amount of venom uh, and, uh, and, you know, it's a hemotoxin, right? And uh, they can put out a huge amount of venom, but it's not the most, uh, it's not the most toxic. I mean, there's other snakes that have more toxic venom that put out less. Uh, and but rattlesnakes can strike, and some uh, some uh, snakes like uh, you know coral snakes don't strike. Uh, their their venom is neurotoxin in coral snakes, and and you but but they don't they can't they don't strike you. You have to like mess with them to get hurt. And if you're not messing with it, you're not going to get hurt. And and a lot of snakes like rattlesnakes will tend to try to avoid you. Rattlesnakes don't chase you, right? They'll just stand their ground. The rattlesnakes got to stand their ground law and then they'll try to get away, right? Rattlesnakes don't want to, uh, don't want to fight. Uh, that's why they have a rattle, right? To tell you to please leave me alone. Um, and, uh, but then there's other snakes that will crawl in bed with you, for instance, in some in Asia, I think the crate. And then there's snakes that'll actually chase you that are quite deadly. And then there's other snakes that are super uh, venomous like sea snakes, but who, who's running around out with the tuna fish? You know, not, not, not many people get bitten by those. All right, so uh, let's talk about, I'll just answer questions. Dawn Girl says, we don't have any cases yet in Hawaii that we know of. Good. It won't last for long if you don't. Uh, China does a lot of work in Africa. Yes, they do, Chewy says. Africa has lots of Chinese invaders. Yep, I've heard so many stories. And, uh, you know, and so many stories about how, uh, you know, Chinese and various sorts of Africans. There's many African cultures, you know, that just, they don't get along well. Uh, a lot of mutual racism. Uh, hello, Nathan. Good. Loud and clear in Texas. All right. Say, okay. I'm looking for questions and, um, hello, Monique Barneth, Margarete Bennett and Christina Lowry. Let's see. Okay. Hello in Ohio, Pennsylvania. And, uh, okay. Let's see. Wow, there's so many here, but I'm not seeing a lot of questions. Though. Hello to everybody, though. Oh, good. Hello, Cypher184. New video looks great. Thanks, Chrominator. Took a lot of work and effort, but we got it going. And we're going to improve it more, uh, but we're, we'll continue to improve it as the time goes on. Okay, let's see. Well, I'll just skip all the way to the bottom here because many of the questions, what about the prisons? What's going on? Barbara says, I think that was an old uh, question that I already answered. Love the Spider-Man cushion. Nicola says, great. Me too. Uh, and so, yeah, Tommy says, cotton mouth moxin will come after you. They always say that, but you know, and I used to swim, I used to, I've caught a lot of cotton mouths and, and, um, and been, you know, <laughs> they stink. And, um, uh, been out there and rattlesnakes actually uh, stink too, but I've been out there with them a lot and I've never been chased by a cottonmouth, but everybody will say that. Everybody will say a cottonmouth can get you and they can bite you underwater and all that stuff. I don't know if they really can. That's a ongoing, you know, ongoing debate amongst people that swim with cottonmouths, which I've done. Not intentionally, but if you're swimming in Florida, you're swimming with cottonmouths. 
Michelle Witzel. I agree. All the students from China returning back to colleges in the U.S. after Christmas break. But before travel restrictions were in place, that was my concern. Oh, yeah. They're out there. They are out there. Oh, oh, I wow. Look at that. Um, I can actually click your question and it makes your question pop up on the screen. Is that cool or what? The overlay has been added, resize in the pinch zoom gesture on your trackpad. Well, wow, this is so cool. This is new software. This is, <laughs> I'm very new to it. So you see me with these happy faces because, uh, well, there we go. So now when I'm answering questions, I can just click on your question. So, wow, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll use that. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see. Gambi Idrini, let's see. I'll add that up there. Uh, you're saying once you get the virus, in theory, you can no longer get it. Hold on. Uh, uh, the, uh, some of the infectious, infectious disease experts are saying this is unknown. With this particular virus, it is unknown. That remains an unknown. So we have to be careful with that. That remains an unknown as of within about the last 24 hours, to my knowledge. Um, and chances are that's not something that they're going to sort out really quickly. That's probably going to take a lot of observation and testing to figure if that's truthful. Uh, again, I'm not an infectious disease expert, but I think that that's not something that they can determine quickly. Kathy Swingler, confirm case in Georgia now. Let me click your comment and make it go. Oh, look at that. That is so cool. All right. Uh, confirm cases in Georgia. And now one confirmed case here in North Carolina, Wake County. I've been to Wake County many times. Nine have now died in long-term nursing home in Washington State. Good Lord. North Carolina confirmed the patient had traveled to the nursing home in Washington State. How many were on the same flight returning to North Carolina? Well, that's a good question. Uh, hmm. And that's another. Uh, Eva Justo asked, how about boiling water? Would that help? Absolutely. Boiling kills it all. Boiling definitely helps. Keep in mind, if you're at high altitude, like really high, like when I go up to Nepal, I've walked up to Mount Everest a couple of times, just to the bottom, not to the top. But, you know, the higher you get, the boiling point decreases, right? So if you're like at sea level, once it starts boiling, you've killed everything, right? Uh, but um, but if you're at a really high altitude, uh, uh, then you'll, you might have to adjust. Uh, but boiling will. But remember, boiling is not filtration. So if there's anything in there like heavy metals or that sort of thing, then you might want to use some other way, reverse osmosis. Not that that's always available. I mean, it, it, or, you know, first you need, if you're in a real dire straits, you need water. But boiling will definitely kill everything, including cotton mouth moccasins. If there's snakes in your water and you boil it, it'll kill the snakes too. And then you can eat the snakes because you boiled the snakes. All right, let's see. Ebola is... All right. Oh, Jonathan says, Jonathan Jet Palmer says, thanks for changing the camera angle. You are most welcome. And it's much better for me too. I didn't like looking down. I'm still looking down now because I'm looking down at comments. So, so I'm not always looking at the camera. I'm looking at the comments. So let's see. Uh, let's. Yeah. Michelle. Uh, Michelle. Barker held is saying, couldn't this virus have been brought to the U.S. before the quarantines and travel bans? Oh, definitely. And the chances of that having occurred are approximately unity. I would say as close to 100% as you can get without going over. Uh, okay. Uh, Lenart. Yeah, so Lenart. But jorks then uh uh sorry I don't speak in Norwegian uh so, yeah Elskedai that's Norwegian right uh they are big on tourism where tourists go the virus goes yeah absolutely and um yeah no question about that whatsoever so let's shoot down to the bottom uh and Dina Gordon uh, says this is much easier to watch do masks work Beth asks yes they work. Uh, now, CDC was just putting out more false information recently and the Surgeon General both saying that they don't work. Uh, but what they're trying to do, the United States failed in our preparedness. We didn't stockpile the 
masks that we need. So our medical professionals and everybody else, maybe, you know, the people running the prisons and that sort of thing uh, will not have the mask. So they're just transparently saying, don't wear masks. They're not helping you anyway, because we need them in the hospitals. We need them in other places because, you know, we need masks because they help. And remember this radiates beyond just this disease, beyond this virus. Once the hospitals are overwhelmed and doctors and nurses and other medical professionals are now out of action because they're infected or in quarantine, then they can't work. Right. And already many surgeries, uh, have been postponed. So this is a big deal. So there's many uh, surgeries now that are not, not happening right now. There's many medical procedures that are not happening now that should be happening. This is all stockpiling too, for those, for those that, you know, uh, are not so affected that they die from not getting procedures. Um, and so, uh, make question type twice present. So, oh, okay. Eric is saying, all right, Eric is saying, Oh, I see what you're saying. Eric is saying, make the question size twice the present size. Okay. Got it. Thank you for that feedback. Is that too big? Oh, wait, how about that? And I'll put it over here. Uh, but that's what Eric says. And so that's what I did. Good. Is that big enough? How about people that need uh, glasses or that looking on a tiny screen? I don't know how this will look on a, on a cell phone screen. Uh, Rita Holland Moore. Let's see what Rita says. Um, Rita says, uh, I, oh, then our comment shot up. Rita said, uh, wait, let me click it again. There we go. I was at the doctor office yesterday and inquired about the availability of my prescription. I was told that this virus has mutated three times. So how long has it been around? They were concerned, but did not overplay it. Yeah, I, I'm not overplaying it, but I don't want to underplay it either. It's quite serious or I would not have just basically stopped everything I'm doing to to study up on this um, world changing event. Steve Conley says, looks good. I wear glasses talking about screen. Good. And Needy Yates says, perfect. And Sean Mitchell says, looks good on the cell phone. I love that we're able to, and Ewan actually put a link up. Where did this, oh, here's Ewan's link. Now I'm going to try something. Hopefully this doesn't knock me offline. I'm going to click this link that Ewan sent and see. And if I just knock offline, then we'll know I shouldn't do that in the future. Let me see. Oh, the link doesn't work. It's not a hot link for me. So anyway. Uh, but you and put a link that says masks work. Thank you. And um, all right, let's go back to the bottom and look for more uh, questions here. Uh, hello from New Mexico. That's a beautiful state. Let's see. Trying not to panic anyone. See, that's the, you know, uh, obviously some people are just going to panic, you know, and some people are going to sit like turtles on a log until the gator gets them right. And, and then some people are going to be so cool now and then they panic later, you know, and then there's people like a lot of people on my Facebook and me who I'm not panicked at all, but I'm very prepared. I got plenty of food. You know, when I go to wars, I wear all my body armor. You know what? I carry, you know what that is? All the military people know, you know what that is, right? That's a, that's a tourniquet, right? Uh, you know, when you get shot, you get a leg blown off or whatever. These are obviously very important. And, you know, I used to wear tourniquet tourniquets on both legs and arms. Not tight, of course, because it would kill your leg and arm. You wouldn't be able to work. You wouldn't be able to stand. You'd, uh, anyway, but I would keep them there in case I got shot in a leg or got a lower leg or arm blown off or something. Then they could tighten it up very quickly. Or maybe if I'm still conscious, I could do it myself. So, and you know, some people say, oh, that's paranoid. And I'm like, am I, am I really that paranoid? Cause I have almost certainly done more real combat than any living American war correspondent. And I'm not talking war. There's people who go, I've been to 25 wars and I spent all my time in all those wars. I've seen a lot of people that spend a lot of time in wars, but don't really do much time in combat. And I spent a lot of time in combat and I can back it up. You can see gazillions of photos that I've published in videos and you know, other people's videos with me and I'm out there in firefights and stuff. I was, and it wasn't just like 20 or 30 or 50 or a hundred. It was hundreds, you know, it was like a lot. Uh, and so, uh, I, I don't panic. Uh, it's, uh, you know, but I do prepare, you know, I have, I still have tourniquets and, uh, and 
you know, when, when somebody gets shot or gets their legs blown off or whatever, and people are putting these tourniquets on, if they're still conscious, they're always screaming, uh, you know, cause it hurts like crazy, you know, and actually some people actually, uh, you know, grown men will still actually call out for their mother and that sort of thing. This is very severe stuff, but I would see these things and I would continue to go to combat day after day, despite seeing these things. And so I'm not panicking. I'm just telling you what's up. And what is up is this virus is quite real. And uh, and I, if I were you, I would pay very close attention to all aspects of this virus. Uh, Steve Conley saying, let me see. Uh, Steve Conley saying, you already can't buy a uh, mask. What, what is this? Um, you, let's see. You already can't buy masks. Regular paper mask, 60% effective. Don't panic about what you can't control. Yeah, nobody's panicking, Steve. Well, maybe somebody is, but I'm not. But um, I, I don't even like masks like this. I don't like them at all. I, I don't like it. Frankly, they suck. Um, I like these sort of masks. And I like Spider-Man. And uh, these are the... I, this is the kind I'm wearing right here. This is the uh, 3M... 7502. It's a 7502 mask, right? This is the one I'm wearing. And the filters I've got is a six is a, a 6001 filter. You can see it. I don't know if that's focusing well. How is it? 6001 filter. Now notice that one doesn't have the the outsert on it. That this is a activated carbon filter for organic vapor. But notice that one has the the outsert. See that white part? That's the P95, or you can get N95, right? The 95 is 95% 95 of particulates. So this is, so I got that, and then I put these outserts. See that outsert? That is it. Will it focus? Oh, that way. Sorry. Screenshot that. You can get that on Amazon, right? Screenshot it. Oh, if it's focusing. Anyway, so that snaps onto here. Snaps on. So now I've got, it's actually two filters, right? So I got the activated carbon is this one. And then there's this one, this P95, or you can get an N95. And, uh, and then it's easy to breathe. I mean, you can wear this bad boy for a couple hours and it doesn't, and it doesn't hurt. Like I, I was wearing it the other day for a couple of hours and, uh, and, and it, it was quite comfortable. It was very comfortable. And plus, you look like Top Gun, you know, you look like Maverick and F-14 or whatever. And uh, even Spider-Man likes these sorts of masks, you know. <laughs> Sorry, I like Spider-Man. People make fun of Spider-Man. They just don't have good taste. All right, so let's see. Um, uh, South Africa, Penny Singh has donated 30,000 masks to China. Why? Why would they do that? Uh, let's see. Uh, jumped back in... Wait, what was court saying? Court says, jumped back and forth. I think YouTube audio and video is better now. Chat's better on Facebook still. Oh, <laughs> there's always something in there. It, we don't, there's not the perfect site. So the chats are better on Facebook. Uh, but the, uh, but the, yeah, I actually agree. I, I, I know what you're saying. Cause it's easier to chat back and forth on Facebook. Uh, for some reason, it's just the format. Uh, ch -ch -ch. All right. Look on Amazon. Barbara Spaulding is saying uh, for the mask. Okay. I'm looking for any other questions. Otherwise, I'm going to actually. Let's see. Steve Connolly saying 3M mask, the best respirators, most effective. 3M is not shipping them to stores, only to necessary government agencies. Uh, actually, a friend of mine, a Japanese friend, actually, we were talking yesterday about masks, and I was telling him to get this one. And I told him specifically to get this one. And while we were on the phone, he specifically bought this one. I think he got it from Amazon, I'm pretty sure. And he got this same outsert that I got, and he got this uh, same 6001. And look, since I've taken this off and putting it, we've just learned something. I've taken this off and put it back on numerous times to show it. And look, it's cracked. It's now cracked. See? Cracked right there. I may have to glue that together. 
But luckily, I got extra. But still, I'm not going to take it back off again now. Well, as long as it'll hold that white part on, it'll be good to go. But still, you can see the the plastic. I touched my face. You can see the plastic is that uh, did crack. So that plastic seems to be a little brittle on the on the clear plastic part here on the on the top part. All right. Let's see. Uh, Rita's saying this picture and sound is so much better. Thank you. We put a lot of work into it. Thank you. Th thank you for everybody who's donated on Patreon, PayPal, Venmo, uh, 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 Bitcoin, uh, my Japanese bank account, which is Mitsubishi Bank, Bank of America, Zelle, uh, so many ways. Uh, and uh, my new books are out, by the way. My new book is out in Japan. It just came out about two days ago. And it's only a, you can find it on on uh, on uh, Amazon.jp. It's only in Japanese language. You can find it. You can Google go to Amazon. And it's also on an ebook, so you can buy it in an ebook as well. So there we go. Yeah. And so that's my third book, and it's on Japanese. It's on a, a Chinese information war. You can see that's my old picture when I was more handsome in the Iraq War. And uh, so I've had three books in Japanese language about similar topics. And so I'll talk about this more later. Actually, uh, later today, I'll just do a dedicated video for my books. And then we'll talk about uh, Chinese information war and the comfort women scam, which is amazing. It makes people angry sometimes when I talk about that. But it's something, you know how I research so hard. Let's see. All right. Uh, Car Caroline Sparkman uh, wrongly says the masks aren't needed unless you are a worker in a hospital that has flu cases. And this is um, completely false. Uh, but that's what the CDC and others are saying, uh, but it's completely false. And others uh, are saying the opposite. And uh, it is false. And you don't need to be even an infectious disease expert to realize that when you sneeze, I got on an airplane on February 5th. I know it was the day because uh, that was the day that Hong Kong authorities kicked me out of Hong Kong, right? And so so I was on an airplane flying back to Thailand and a, a Chinese lady just sneezed, boom, all over everybody in the plane. If she had a mask on, at least it would have been contained to her. But instead, she just sneezed and didn't close her face at all and just boom, all over the place. I think I was live streaming when she did that, wasn't I? Was I? Because I had pu I published it immediately. I was just like, here, this is what we're dealing with. That was February 5th. And I was already talking about that hardcore. That's all I was talking about at that point. That was February 5th, remember? So uh, I'm, you know, a lot of, I I'm, not, I'm, I'm one of the early, one of the earliest people that was right on top of this from the beginning, realizing the peril that this represents. Uh, and keep that in mind when you're looking at serious sources. That's important. Uh, I do my homework. And so when I'm able to say right off the uh, uh, top of my uh, head uh, that the masks are important, uh, then it's because I've done a lot of study. And I'm saying that with confidence. I'm not just like, of course, they're <laughs> no, that's what they are important. That's what the people that are not compromised by the politics in the United States that, you know, our government failed to prepare and stockpile masks. So now we have a mask shortage because approximately 93% of our masks are not made in the United States. They're made in China. And China needs the masks for China. And so we have a shortage of masks because our government did serial stupid things like outsourcing pharmaceuticals or setting the conditions that made our manufacturers want to go to China or use Chinese manufacturers for masks, for whatever's pharmaceuticals, uh, key equipment for our military and that sort of thing. So, and, and then even once they're stock, once they're made by China, we still at least could have stockpiled a bunch of masks, uh, but we didn't. And, you know, why didn't we have at least, uh, w there is at least one American mask uh, producer. What's the name of the company? It was on the Steve Bannon's pandemic show, which is a fantastic show. I've watched all 31 episodes so far. I think it's 31 episodes, right? And he had an American mask maker on there. And, and uh, why haven't we bought billions of masks from that company over the years to stockpile? You know, it would have kept the, the money within the United States by, you know, sending it to American companies. And we would have had all the masks that we need. And this wouldn't be an issue. And the CDC and also the, uh, 
the Surgeon General and others would not be lying to Americans and to the world that masks don't work. And they are outright lying. They have sacrificed this Surgeon General, Jerome Adams, has sacrificed his his uh, his credibility to the point where it's irretrievable. The only way that the Surgeon General can uh, can can recapture uh, uh, credibility is for this Surgeon General to be fired. He just has to be fired. That's the only way. I mean, he's contaminated. He's act outright lied about various things and uh, don't need him. I I'm not going to trust anything he says. He can tell me he he's no more trustworthy than than is Xi uh, or one of the Chinese uh, 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 spokespeople. All right, let's see. Um, Sean Mitchell's asking when thoughts will be, when the virus will be an issue in the States. It is a massive issue right now. Absolutely massive. And if you're American, it doesn't matter if you're American, if you're online right now, this has already affected you. You just might not have gotten the message yet. Um, you know, you are already, uh, this is a used mask. I don't wipe my nose. Sorry. Something was tickling my nose, maybe from this mask. I'm not going to use that one again anyway. Um, but the um, uh, it's already affected you. The markets have crashed and had much turmoil, and there's all kinds of things going on. Many flights have been canceled. Uh, I think all schools in the United States should be canceled right now. Uh, Olympics should be canceled. Uh, they're going to be canceled. I'll, I'll bet you 99% chance that the Olympics will be canceled. Actually, Saudi Arabia has already canceled the... the uh, the trips to Mecca and Medina, those have been canceled. Uh, you know, uh, that's many things. Uh, Iran has also canceled many religious uh, um, celebrations. I mean, you're just going to have to start canceling things. And, and, and we really need to start, use this as a moment of opportunity to, uh, excuse me, to, uh, to, to work out kinks on doing school online. Because there's a lot of kids that could do school online around the world and have world. I know this could affect teachers. You know, it might need fewer and fewer fewer teachers. But there's a lot of kids around the world that could be in the same classroom as, you know, uh, you know, uh, in the same math classroom. Uh, you know, up in the north of Alaska and down in Brazil could be in the same math classroom, right? Uh, so I mean, there's many, and and they don't have to go out. And there's a lot of, as this is something that people have talked about for many years already, you know, online education, which is my, a huge amount of my education now is only online uh, or buying books online and getting them sent to me or downloading eBooks or uh, going and watching professors on YouTube. I do all the time. I'm always watching scientists on YouTube all the time. Almost every day I watch at least some scientists talk about something because I just have a thing about science. And so, and have since I was like, you know, I don't know, eight or nine years old or something. So, um, uh, yeah, so this is an opportunity to, 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 to do it. Let's see. Uh, Court Garloff says, MIT Online, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Lois Stockwell, 100% correct. I'm not sure what you're referring to, but okay. And, um, and, uh, Okay, please. Uh, Sonia says, please look at G Sun Re comment further. G Sun Re comment. Let me see. Where is that? G Sun Re comment. Um, where is it? I don't see it. it. Must be very far up here, because I've I've gone up very far. Uh, Neha says, is your mask one size fits all? This one comes in three sizes that I know of. 7501 is small. Uh, 7502 is this size. That's medium. And 7503 is large. This is a 3M 7502. You see the M, medium? Is that focused? And, uh, and you can get that on Amazon if they still have them. I think they do because, again, I'm almost sure my friend... Uh, but there, I don't see that comment that you were talking about. It must be way up here because uh, I've already scrolled up dozens of comments. I don't see it. All right. Um, 
Okay, hey, Ward Smith, my old childhood friend. Uh, is there any info about child fatalities in China? It has been suggested children are carriers without symptoms. Yeah, I've seen that as well. And, you know, Japan just canceled all schools, not universities yet. Uh, I say yet, <laughs> uh, the qualifier there. And um, uh, because the kids can become super spreaders, right? The children can uh, just get it and bring it all over the place. You know how children are. Uh, so they'll just be little reservoirs running around. And so, uh, yeah. And so I, I don't know. I mean, of course, China, we can't trust anything from China anyway, but we should get reliable information out of countries like, um, uh, you know, South Korea and, and Japan in the United States, well, I don't trust the CDC at all, but there'll be, but there'll be doctors and scientists that will, that will break ranks. Uh, Mike Collins says, Brian just voted for Texas support for the wall. Good. Good. Uh, the, uh, speaking of which, Super Tuesday, what a Tuesday it's been. Uh, unbelievable. And look, you know, America's coming down to a choice between Bernie, the communist, who's literally looks like he he's in very terrible health, and Biden. Come on, man! Biden thinks he's running for the Senate. Have you seen him? He's like he's he's a uh, he's losing it. I, I don't want to make fun of him. That's that's un that's just un that's just but wrong. But he, he's unfit for duty. He's unfit for for any sort of public office. Uh, he's actually one of the problems that we have in the United States with people that are just professional politicians for life politicians that are like senators and vi vice president they're like everything for a lot they're too entrenched uh, it's too much old uh, you know he's just a professional con artist and and, and now he, how can anybody even at all vote for him when they see he's like coming out like every day biden is saying things that just don't make sense it looks like he's got some sort of dementia um and I'm not an expert on that, so but you can see that something's wrong. Uh, what uh, Michelle Witzel saying? What mitigation efforts has Thailand taken? Uh, not very many. Uh, uh, they've put up thermal scanners at a few of the airports, but those don't matter because a huge amount of spreading is asymptomatic anyway. And also, Chinese know how to get around those. Uh, they'll splash cold water on their face. Uh, in the bathroom before they come through, or they'll take uh, uh, Tylenol to lower their temperature. There's certain things that you can do to lower your temperature, like going to the bathroom first and cooling off your face. Touch my face there, but they'll cool their face off, take Tylenol and that sort of thing, uh, things to reduce their temperature. And uh, let's see. Uh, Sonia Jones is saying, you and Kit won't even let me, com won't even let or even comment, huh? Okay. All right. I'm looking for any questions specific. Super Thursday, Chewy say. I'm looking for any specific questions. And Lois is saying you're dead on about Biden. He's something's wrong with him. Uh, Biden, like he is showing signs of dementia. Yeah. Uh, what mitigation efforts? I've already answered that. Uh Let's see what Sonia's saying. Sonia Jones, she's saying they've took took over their factory in China and set the machines to make a million body bags. Oh, really? Mm. Uh, uh, well, I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, except, uh, huh? I don't know. Why would China make body bags? I, I don't even know. Uh, a million? I don't even know because I don't know how. Because I know they cremate a lot and. Uh, you can, but if they're doing something like that, it could be quite serious, obviously, because, you know, body bags are reusable. <clears throat> the ones that the United States military uses certainly are. They're very tough. We use them for more than just bodies. Use them for carrying ammunition and that sort of thing and food and that sort of thing. Uh, let's see. All right. What about, Okay. Sean Fleck is saying, what about Vietnam? Only show 16 infections. Do you trust these numbers? Oh, no, I don't trust Vietnamese numbers. No, not at all. 
because uh, Vietnam also, look, we can't trust American numbers. That's been clear. Uh, it, uh, I mean, for just so many reasons that we could just go on about, uh, you know, the test kit fiasco, uh, Surgeon General, you know, giving uh, 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 transparently false advice, uh, CDC failure after failure after failure and just uh, playing it down like nothing's going on. In reality, they're, they're, ch they're so trying to say, let's be calm, that they're not telling everybody to leave the theater that's on fire. All they need to do is be very crystal. If they're trying to save the markets by showing a happy face, it's not going to work in the long run. Well, it didn't work. You see what's just happened, right? Look at financial news for the for today. Let's see what it does in the next uh, next month. I mean, uh, you you can't hide the fire for long. You can only cover it up for you know. At first, again, you smell it. Yep. Do you smell a fire? Yeah. Well, that was me back in January. I'm like, hey, I smell a fire. I smell a virus. You know, obviously, I'm not smelling it, but I was like, something's wrong here. And um, and you can see from the things I started to post and the things I started to say on my live streams, something's wrong with the virus. And then finally on, you know, uh, since late, early, early to mid January, I was already talking about it. And then um, certainly by late January, I was talking about it a lot and I was getting more and more concerned. And then by uh, early February, I was just like, oh man, this is, this is really dangerous. And now it's a month later and it's, uh, and there's still people in denial that this is not a huge and growing risk it's like there's smoke all running through the town and they're still denying that there's a forest fire. All right. Okay, let's see. Adolfo, Chinese airplanes are landing in Tijuana, Mexico and are sending their passengers to America from there. Yeah. I mean, that's what they'll do. Uh, you know, for instance, Chinese exchange students going to Australia, we're just going to Bali first. Uh, and, you know, people that were, you know, when we put up the travel ban from Hubei province, they were just going to other places first. And then it's too easy. It's, it's too simple. Uh, and uh, what Lay Lewis said, 51 confirmed cases in UK as of 9 a.m. this morning. Let's see. Okay. Okay, let's see. What does Ewan always has something important to say? And Ewan doesn't post stuff without. I've never seen Ewan post something wrong, actually. Sometimes Ewan posts stuff that I don't know about, but when I check into it later, it's it's always uh, accurate. Ewan says, uh, Ewan Kit Moon, N95 is a filter rating, removes 95% of particles bigger than 0.3 microns. Frontline nurses in Singapore used 3M brand disposable N95 mask during SARS outbreak. You should be like a co-host, Ewan. You're always super accurate. Um, let's see. Matt Romano, Trump 2020 crushed the Communist Party. <laughs> Trust me, I won't be voting for Bernie. Um, Penny is asking, what is the situation in India? You know, I got on my uh, inoculation uh, vaccinations last year to go back to India uh, but I, uh, sans one, I was missing one and it was a three, uh, vaccine series for that. I got about what, 12 or 15, I can't remember 12 or 15 different. Well, I can't remember, but, and, and then, uh, there was one that I needed to get one more shot, but it ended up in the insurgency in Hong Kong and didn't get that one shot. So now I have to get all three of those again. Let's see. Kazuka Masai is saying, Hey, Michael, I think America's policy to China disease is right. Uh, China, I mean, the Chinese disease. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we, uh, I mean, we need to, uh, well, I think our, uh, our policy towards China should have been, we should have cut off all flights from China, period. We should have cut off all flights from Chinese citizens uh, that didn't go through a quarantine first until we got this sorted out. It's too late. It, it, this is, I mean, it's going to spread through the United States. And, but we can, the more we can slow it, we should shut, we should really be shutting our borders at this point for at least a couple of weeks. I'm not saying shut them forever. That would be ridiculous for the economy and so many other reasons. Uh, but uh, it's just uh, out of out of control. Uh, Brian Anderson is saying, do you feel that the spread is slower in areas with warmer hot weather? Now, that's something uh, that the infectious disease experts 
are hoping will occur. It's unknown, uh, you know, uh, yet because some diseases do and some don't like uh, seasonal flu clearly uh, does and not, not do as well in hot weather. Uh, will this one be seasonal is, is unknown yet. Well, we're going to know pretty soon though. We'll know, we'll know at the same time. Um, uh, let's see. Do you have to have medical hospital care if you get the virus? Can you treat it at home if you're in good health? Uh, Joe Ann Wiggins asks. Uh, it looks like about 80% from what I've been reading, uh, about 80% of the people that get it either have low or not serious symptoms. Just stay home, self-quarantine, and you know, and stay in, and that means staying away from your family too, because you'll just infect them, uh, and try, you know, self quarantine. Uh, and it's still unknown. How long did it last? I mean, it's still, I mean, you can see some of the quarantines are 14 days, but then there's a lot of information that this goes on way beyond that. And is still, uh, infectious. So that there's a lot of missing information here. Uh, Tommy Barrios says Tucker Carlson called it the Chinese flu last night. I'm glad a lot of my stuff is catching on. You won't believe a lot of this. I don't know if Tucker watches my work, but there are a lot of people around that do. Uh, it's not always the size of sometimes my readership gets really huge and sometimes it's really small. It's like a expanding and contracting universe, but there's always key people watching in different. Uh, like I know people close to Trump actually watch my, my, uh, my work and have since the beginning as did people close to Obama and a lot on Bush in particular due to the war stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's see. Well, I think that's about it for now. And what time is it? And I've, I've got so much more stuff. Oh, it's zero five ten here in on Wednesday morning in, in Tyran. I'll be back on the John bachelor show. Uh, it would be Friday morning right here, Thursday night, I think. I think Thursday night uh, at 2145 EST, so that's Washington time. It'll be with Gordon Chang, uh, the famous Gordon Chang that you see all over CNN and Fox all the time and, and uh, everywhere, you know. Uh, and um, <clears throat> you'll see him about 10 times a week on major interviews. And Thaddeus McCotter also often on the big interviews. And we're, we all... Uh, all four of us are often doing on the John Bachelor show. John Bachelor is the host. I love his show. I've been watching it for years. So John will be the host, and then Gordon Chang will be on, and then Thaddeus McCotter, and then they have me on twice a week. And so, and so Marianne Burroughs says, I was able to order both your mask and filters on Amazon. Good. Did you just do it, Marianne? If so, that's good news. Uh, Stephen Davila says, World Health Organization estimates coronavirus, we'll call it G's disease, or we'll call it a, a China plague or Wuhan virus death rate at 3.4% higher than earlier estimates. We'll see. Uh, Lois Stockwell is saying, Michael, people think the virus was made in China, but it's just another strain of it, isn't it? I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into the, conspiracy theory for obvious reasons, but, uh, I mean, but I have a good imagination too, but I don't know. I mean, it could have come straight from mother nature. It could have come from their lab. It could have come from, you know, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's a good chance that, that sooner or later we'll find out. Uh, but I don't believe we know the answer yet, but I don't even know that. I don't even know if somebody knows the answer. Hey, Jane Bookless. Let's see. Azar isn't even a doctor. He was a lobbyist for big pharma. Okay. Kung Fu. Kung Flu. That's what I'm saying. Obsession of the month. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and shut off for now. Uh, you and Kit Moon says, go to Michael's Facebook page. I love the way I can see all these comments here on the right. And they're so much more clearer for me to see. Uh, and uh, then before, and, and my ability to click them and let others see. Uh, okay. And uh, wow, this changes how we can work. And again, I'm going to start taking call-ins after I make sure this other part of the system works because now people can call in on my phone and it'll go straight to, and you'll be able to hear them talk. Actually, I'm going to send a message to Maura Moynihan right now.
and uh, and ask her when she wants to come on. Hey, Steve, and thank you. And uh, and again, thank you for everybody who supports my work. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much uh, for hitting my Patreon. It's vital, vital, vital. Thank you for hitting my Patreon, PayPal, uh, Venmo, um, and um, Zelle, Bank of America account, Mitsubishi Bank, Japanese, uh, PayPal, Ven uh, Patreon. Is, I love Patreon because it's monthly support. And I like to thank everybody. It's some people I can't thank personally because for whatever reason, the emails bounce or their email's not there or something. And so if I haven't thanked you, I apologize. I want to thank you. Uh, and I'll thank you now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool setup. Maybe says, all right, let's roll for now. Thank you, Lay. And Mike out. Let me see how I shut this thing off now. So I don't end up like cleaning my house here while it's still live streaming. End broadcast. <laughs>